Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Argus A. They were made from 1936 to 1941. This one's serial number indicates that it was made in 1940. So this guy actually predates World War II. Most of the body's made of Bakelite. Back is aluminum, has a fixed pressure plate. This has an uncoated three element uh, 50 millimeter lens. It's collapsible and I screwed up a few shots because it just it looks like it's ready to go and you forget. It's two zone focus. Uh, one range is six to 18 feet. That's when this is extended and locked. And when it's extended and it'll still rotate, that's 18 feet to infinity. Um, the whole assembly, the lens with the shutter, will keep rotating. And in some of the older manuals, they actually show people shooting like this, using their forehead to stabilize it. Makes sense. I guess it worked. I guess uh, later manuals didn't have that. It's kind of funny. Uh, it's got a simple viewfinder. And this, the original model, um, does not have a meter. Later ones had a, another piece up here. It was an extinction meter. You'd see which square you could just still make out, and then read it off the chart for the different aperture and shutter combinations. It's got an Ilex Precise shutter. Apparently this particular shutter was made specifically for these cameras. In the beginning, this was still the International Radio Corporation, and the cameras were just called Argus. Um, Ilex is better known for large format shutter assemblies. It has a uh, 200th, a 100th, a 50th, and a 25th of a second, plus bulb and time. Time being the press it and it opens, press it again, and it closes. And rotate this guy back around the way I usually use it. Um, the aperture goes from f4.5, that's its brightest, f5.6, f8, and f11. So not a heck of a lot of range, but for a camera that's, what, 77 years old now? Not bad. Uh, one really interesting thing, the film runs from right to left. So this is you know, where you lock in the cassette. This was one of the early cameras that used the Kodak daylight loading cassette. Load it in there, comes across, there's a, a slot in the take-up spool. And once you've got it loaded, fire, up, fire off a couple of blanks, then you take the film counter and turn it counterclockwise, or you can do it minus two, and then do your shots. And after you shoot, you press this little button, it releases it. This dial will rotate a full revolution minus one count. It's kind of cool. This is a slightly later one. The early ones just had this top spool for the sprockets of the film to work the film counter. This one has the upper and lower ones. It's in pretty good shape. The shutter seems pretty accurate. Um, I guess some of these, the aperture wasn't quite as bright as they claimed, but then the shutter was correspondingly slower. So other than blur, your exposures were still the same way they were supposed to be. Really, that is about it. Um, there's no tripod socket wasn't until a couple of versions later um, they added uh, flash. I've really enjoyed shooting with this. I mean, it's challenging because I did things like forgetting to pull the lens out. And then also, you know, if you're close, focus for infinity. If you're something six feet to 18 feet away, it actually does make a difference. But it's simple as can be. I got lucky I didn't have to tear into the shutter. It's in pretty good shape as well. So I used uh, some old Fuji film. 
I think uh, in keeping with this thing's vintage, I'll blow a roll of black and white through it next time. I'll see you then.